and we're going to reset current menu item back to zero in the editor here. Save our scene. So there we have a basic menu that you can select. You can use iTween to animate it in a cool way. Um, we could even try adding other weird things to this. We could do stuff where we use rotate calls. Um, I have no idea what this will look like, by the way, so let's try it. I mean, this won't make the menu very useful. It's actually, I'm trying to guess which way it'll rotate. Yeah, so that's something kind of neat. Um, could even make these pop out a little bit more. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Now, the other cool thing about iTween is right now we're using the default. Uh, what's called easing, basically the effect it uses to create the smooth interpolation. But we have all these different easing curves available to us. Um, and if we check the move to function here, this is all the documentation by the way, it's all on the website. Um, let's see, how do we set the ease? I think it's called transition or something. There it is. Okay. So, try one of these strange ones. Like bounce. That should be pretty weird. I think this is a string. One of the weird things about you may have noticed about iTween is it uses a hash table to do its function call. Um, so that's why it doesn't look like a regular function call. So the anatomy of this is you have to pass in the game object of the object that you want to move. So you could pass in a completely different game object, but since we want to just animate ourselves relative to whatever this menu item is attached to, we're just going to use game object. And then we use the crazy curly braces here to start defining a hash table and stuff in quotation marks basically defines variables colon then uh, basically means that we're gonna set the value to something could be any value and that's basically how you set the different parameters so it takes a, a while to get used to and I usually mess up the syntax when I'm just writing it um, because it's different than everything else so that's sort of one of the downsides of iTween, but with the amount of power and ease of use that you get with it, I think it's worth uh, fiddling around with this sort of funky syntax. Okay, so we've added this bounce transition here. And we've added it to that one too, so let's just see if this actually does anything. Whoa, okay. So as you can see, there's a lot of really cool stuff that we can do with iTween and we can do it really quickly without a lot of code. This is not a lot of code to write to make funky moving menus. So that's sort of just the basic stuff I wanted to take you guys through. There's, there's lots of really cool stuff you could do um, with these menus. You could actually, for example, take a light. Um, let's see, throw it over here maybe. Uh, lower the intensity a bit and we're actually going to throw the light into the menu item hit apply now all these things have lights which looks terrible right now um, let's try to make this look a bit less lame and delete some of our other lights here and basically I just want to do this because it's interesting to see what these lights look like when they're animated. So now we have lights that are moving with the menu. It's kind of a funky effect. You can make it look way better if you wanted to actually spend time doing that. So lots of really cool stuff that we can do. Obviously this menu doesn't look that great right now, but it is moving in a really interesting way. And to make it look better, you could do stuff like throw 3D models in the background, 
changed, you know, the way that the sky looks and the background of the scene. Um, there's just tons and tons of options that you can play around with to make this look, look cool. If you have pro version of Unity, you could add shadows to these menus. Um, I don't know what this is going to look like, if anything. But you might be able to get them to project sort of interesting shadows on each other. That looks pretty cool. We could do something like add uh, some ground to this thing. Let's go into infinity. So now the objects have a bit more presence because they're casting shadows everywhere. Um, it's starting to get a bit overdone because we've got so many different lights going on and way too many transitions and all that, but... but yeah, that's that's sort of the basic idea. Now, if you actually wanted to add um, the ability to select these things, you could add something here, say for example... Um, right now I'm just going to spew something to the debug log that says uh, you... I don't want to say selected, but you activated menu item number, current menu item. So let's see if we get some... Oh, we don't have an input button fire yet. But I think we have fire 1 is set to left control, but jump by default is set to space, which is a nice button to use, so let's use that instead. So if we hit spacebar now, we see at the bottom of the screen here, it says you activated menu item number one, if I hit space, menu item number two, number zero, etc. So then what you could do is you could either decide what to do here. You could be like, uh, if current menu item is zero, this means new game. So we're going to do um, application dot load level, whatever. Or instead of that, what you could do is set up the actual functionality in the menu items, current menu item dot activate, and then this could go off to call some kind of function in the menu item script. Um, there's also ways to make this completely generic so that you could have an object completely unrelated to either of these that gets a function call that says, oh, hey, activate this certain function. But that's conversation for a different time. So this is just really the basics of iTween and cycling through a menu. Thanks for watching.